And we'll go. Welcome to the programme, Sean O'Toole. Thank you. So, how's things? You've been keeping busy? Yeah, yeah, busy. Watching town, obviously. Ah. Um, yeah, very busy. You know, we've got lots to talk about today, so we'll crack mm. straight on with it. You're yeah, here yeah. to talk about Smile A While. Yeah. Um, for those that might not know about it, could you tell us what, what is Smile A Yeah, while? Smile A While's um, Huddersfield Town's currently only running fanzine. So yeah, we've, we've been going now two seasons, going from strength to strength. So, and uh, we're getting a lot of good feedback. So yeah, it was, you know, we're just doing this thing really. Uh, people can contribute. Um, they don't have to contribute, but people can contribute, and then you know we take it from there. And we're we're looking at about moving forward now, doing about three to four issues a season. Um, so yeah, that's that's the general general gist of it. Yeah, cool. And so, how did it get started? Um, I suppose we, I suppose if anything creative, it starts with an idea and kind of builds from there. Do you know what I mean? So um, I had an idea of kind of, you know, like you, you get like gig guides, you know, you got like Leeds gig guide, for instance. I was thinking like a sort of a fan guide, if you like, you know, the worst pies or, you know, where's the best view of the pitch, whatever. Then it kind of developed to um, like a pocket handbook of a football fan of Huddersfield Town. Then it went to a magazine and then we got talking to different fans and getting feedback. Um, and we heard that they hadn't been a fanzine for over like 10 years or something like that. And I think the predecessors, they did look like about well over 45 issues and they, they started in 1990 and then they sort of disabandoned. So there was obviously a gap there. And, um, and we just went for it and met with my friend in Honley and after a few pints in the Allied, Smile Away was launched. It's pretty organic then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's organic. It's, it's independent. Um, it's you know, it's local people, local fans, and yeah, it's just going from strength, strength to strength. We just take it as we go. We ain't got no like, you know, groundbreaking plan. We're just we're just going with it and and just see, seeing where it takes us, I guess. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah. what does it keep to? What does it take to keep it going? Like, who's involved? Um, well, there's only two of us actually, which is quite surprising for some of like, you know, if you look at Leeds United Square Ball or um, Barnsley FC's West Stand Bogs, they've got big teams, do you know what I mean? And, and a lot of contributors. With me, with, with Smile A While, it's myself and my best mate, Danny Madden. Um, he's the designer and I'm the writer or editor, if you like. And me and him do the thing. He lives over in Manchester, obviously, I'm in, in Home Firth. And we kind of go with it and depending on what's going on, I'll just email things over to him. He's on Photoshop, he gets it all together, and then we, ju we just get it to printers and, and then get down to games. So there's just two of us. We do have contributors. Um, we have Rob Goodswin, who, I, I don't know if you know him, you might know him, he runs the Go Cook Yourself, and he, it's like a, a blog that he does for sort of cooking and things like that, and he does like match day meals. Uh, we've got David Major, who does a bit of punditry for BT Sport. He does uh, Major's Town, Town Trivia Quiz, where he'll sort of quiz old players on their careers to see if they remember <laughs> when they got sent off or w when they broke someone's leg. Um, so, yeah, we, we've got a few contributors, but generally there's just two of us. So, yeah, it's a very small team. Yeah, so w would that be what you'd see as unique about it, or what is, what is unique about it? Um, I guess, yeah, when two of us, I mean, I guess what's unique is that like say we we kind of roll with it you know we we're quite we're independent so we've got nobody telling us what to do um but on that sense it doesn't mean that we're just going to start slating the club you know we're always extremely positive and and we always have been we love the club and we love the manager we love the chairman um but i guess what's unique is that every single issue is always different there isn't like a set sort of format if you like you know one issue will be full colour, the next issue will be black and white, uh, the next issue will be just online. Um, so it sort of varies. We support creative uh, friends of ours that are either into art or, you know, um, graphics or whatever they're into, and we support that. We support local amateur football as well, so we put the local district leagues in there. So there's all different things, you know. I mean, we've, I've got a friend who's in Terrier Brass who, who do the sort of... Uh, the sounds there and down there before the game and we've got a new thing coming in called Know The Score so we're going to put like you know musical score in so if kids are wanting to learn oh, tunes right. and things like that so there's, there's there's just you never there's all different things you know what I mean so you know I think it's I think it's unique yeah. a bit so of a cultural element to it yeah there's a lot. massive cultural element to it yeah it's like 
we do look back at, at old times, you know, less, you know, fruitful times, if you like, and then obviously we look at present day as well and we kind of mix up the both, um, supporting his heritage, but also being in the now as well, you know. Yeah, so what's the what's the process that you go through in production? Like, how does how does it work on a magazine by magazine basis? What's the time frame that you give yourselves? Uh, we never have a time frame. <laughs> we don't. That's I think that's the thing. We don't run it as a business. You know, no. like we don't run it as a business. We don't. I mean, we started charging two pound a copy, but that's it. All gets thrown back in straight back into the website or to funding more printing. So we don't run it like a business, but generally it depends. You know, I'm the network, if you like, so it's all run by me, really, in terms of what the content is. So it depends who I get talking to, who's, whose number I get, you know, what contacts I get, old players, new players, whatever I get going, and then I'll just base it from there. And then as I go with it, I'll just, just email things over to Danny and then we'll start getting it together. Um, so the process is it's, it's very loose, um, sometimes unorganised, but we get it together and people like it. So, yeah. so in, in terms of sort of uh, issues and things like that, you say you've done sort of eight or nine already? Yeah, done, done nine, yeah. Nine, and you're looking to release a new one anytime soon? Yeah, yeah, well, it's a milestone now, obviously, because we've got to 10 issues. So I think 10 issues in two seasons is pretty good going. So. Um, Without giving too much away, we've we've managed to secure an interview with a Huddersfield Town legend, um, who was a player captain and a manager on two separate occasions. Right. So the diehards would know who it is just from that. But yeah. yeah um, we, that's for issue ten. It's not going to be in print and it's not going to be readable online. It's going to be watchable online. So it's going to be similar to what we're doing here. So it's going to be a video interview, oh, right. documentary of this person. Yeah. Um, and we're looking for it to be about half an hour long and it's going to be on YouTube. It's going to be on our website as well. Um, and it's going to be free to watch. So we're not going to charge anything. We're not going to do no subscriptions. Oh, um, so that's issue 10. So yeah, really buzzing about that one. Really excited for it. So we've got a, we've got a location set up for it. Uh, cameras are ready to roll. Um, just waiting for the person to get back from Greece. Wow. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> so, um, how do you distribute? I mean, you've you mentioned that, and I, I must admit, I know a little bit about this because I've yeah, seen you, you down at the yeah. ground, and you know, I bought a copy of your last one, which was yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Way, you know, yeah. With, uh, Cheers, man. Pete's illustrations in there. Yeah, and yeah. Is that is that your standard means of distribution? Yeah, yeah. When we do print. Um, the thing is that we, we, some people are getting a little bit frustrated because we was, again, we just kind of just go with it. Sometimes we'll be in the gas club, sometimes we'll be in the Vulcan, sometimes we'll go down to Boothies Beer and Banter down at the canal side and hand them out there. But the only thing with that is for our followers, they never knew where we were going to be. Yeah. Uh, so now, generally, where we're going to distribute when we do do in print, we're going to be on um, where you saw us on on the walk there yeah. between the gas club and uh, what do they call Stadium it? Stadium Way. Stadium Way. Yeah. We're going to do it on Stadium Way now, uh, where all the other where the fella sells his pin badges and yeah. the guy is on his bagpipes. <laughs> so people know where we are. So that's whenever we do in print, which we will let people know on Twitter. Um, and we'll be on Stadium Way, and that's where we're going to sell them. And like I say, we've just started putting a little mark up on it of two pounds, um, because prior we was always dependent on support by local businesses for sponsorship, and it was quite difficult because people would come and go. Yeah. So now we're paying out of our wages to get the printing done, and then we sell them for two pound a copy, and obviously it all gets filtered straight back in. Yeah. So yeah, Stadium Way, and it'll be two pound a copy when we do uh, run issues in print. Yeah. So that's the plan. Obviously, you've got the celebratory tenth issue coming up, and yeah, we've, yeah. Re we've had reason to celebrate with Huddersfield staying in the <laughs> Premier League as well. Like, I mean, I don't know. Uh, obviously, a successful season. Who yeah. who stood out for you this season? Um, I mean, it's hard to say, isn't it? Because it, it's it has, and it's a cringy thing because it's everyone's it's a team game. It is a team game. Um, but for me, Chris Schindler has got to be the man who stood out in terms of consistency, leadership, you know, uh, his strength on the pitch, just, you know, winning them headers, winning them tackles, like, just, you know, really stepping up. Um, probably, uh, probably second to him, maybe Jonathan Hogg, again. I mean you know I'm coming from, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. Similar thing, yeah, like, I think, you know, for me, Hoggy was, uh, I mean, he's, 
I remember the end of last season and so many people being like, Jonathan Hogg is not yeah. going to be good enough for the Premier oh, yeah, League. Yeah. And the amount that that man stepped up this season and improved as well, is just, I just think it's phenomenal. You know, I, re I really, I was, I was, I mean, I'm probably ch chairman of the Jonathan Hogg Appreciation <laughs> Society, to be fair. I've been banging good on man. all season, but yeah, definitely. I mean, Hopefully. Schindler's hard to look past as well. Yeah, yeah. I think them two, because obviously it's straight down the middle, isn't it? Schindler centre back, Hogg, centre of the park, you know, and it goes from there and that's that's your wall, isn't it? Do yeah, you know what absolutely. I mean? So and I think they've both been absolutely class. So I'd say if you know, both of them really have been the standout players for town, you know, this season. Yeah. yeah. Now it's gonna be another sea another summer of town fans guessing what's gonna be happening in the transfer market. Yeah. I think the big one for most town fans will be David Wagner's future. Yeah. Now there's been a lot of speculation, Chelsea's been mentioned, Leicester's been mentioned, Frankfurt's been mentioned yeah, recently. Yeah, it's been a lot, yeah. What do you feel is gonna be the future for David Wagner this this summer? Well, I feel he'll, he'll stay with town and, and I feel that he should stay with town, um, not underplaying what he's achieved whatsoever, but I think it's very, very early on in the fairy tale, if you like. Um, keeping us up from the championship when we was tipped to go down was nothing short of a miracle. Yeah. Um, now keeping us up in the Premier League, our first season in the Premier League for God knows how long, how, how many years? Yeah, 40 years, 40 odd years. 30, 40 years. That's spectacular. But now he's got a bit of money to play with, hasn't he? he? He can start building now. So if he was to go now, it's like the job isn't finished. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? The job is not finished yet. Like he's he's got us up there, he's kept us up there, just yeah. and now he can start building, potentially make us a household name in the Premier League if that's what he wants to do. Um, I'm not saying top six, I'm not even saying top ten, maybe top end of the bottom half, you know. Yeah. We'd be we'd be overwhelmed with that, wouldn't we? Oh, so yeah. I think he will stay. Going by his C V he spent, I think, four years at Dortmund. You know, his best friend, Jurgen Klopp, spent seven years at Dortmund. So yeah. if, we, if we've got history to go by, they seem to honour the contracts and yeah. do the job properly. So um, if you're listening, David, take note and stay. Indeed, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I, I think every town fan would love for him to stay. I think and right up until the last game of the season, I was fully believing that he was going to stay and then listening to him pre-match, post-match. I've never heard him look backwards before. I've never heard him be retrospective. Even we, yeah. when we got promoted at the end of last season, he was very much talking about what we're going to be doing in the summer, yeah. what we're going to be doing going forward. And I listened to him and I thought, I just started worrying. Yeah. And yeah. there was a little bit of me, I mean, my dad's a Leeds fan, it gets mentioned quite often, but there was a little bit that he said that was like, well, you know, if he goes now, he goes with a clean record. If he stays and second season yeah. syndrome kicks in and, and I'm and that, that, that's that, that and chewing away at me a yeah. bit. And I mean, I've, I've got both fingers crossed that yeah, they just, yeah. Yeah. you know, give him, a, give him a decent transfer kit, eh? offer him a bit more brass yeah. and, you know, if it does, you know, say to mm. him, if it's not working out six months into the season, then feel free to mm. But I think walk. off the point, going off the back of the point, what you said there is that he's still done an amazing job. Even if we was to go oh. down, God forbid, next season, he's still... That is still a massive achievement, what he's done with the budget he had and everything like that. So really, it, I think it can't be tainted, really. You know what I mean? Yeah, so. I think certainly in the eyes of town fans, I think mm. I, I don't think town fans will ever think of Wagner as anything other than a legend now, yeah, right? just definitely. of what he's achieved in yeah, my entire yeah. lifetime watching Huddersfield Town. The yeah. closest we've come is Steve Bruce and... You yeah, know, I mean, definitely. Yeah, so, and then it went downhill from there. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, very much so. Um, but I mean, my worry is that other other clubs might not look at it that way, and David no. might. But we'll see. We'll see. I suppose. Fingers tightly crossed. Yeah, absolutely. Um, where do you think Huddersfield need to strengthen? Well, we need goals. That's for sure. I mean, we had the work ethic. Um, we had the team spirit. We had the application, but we just couldn't find the back of the net this season. I think his top goal scorer was, was it Mounier with yeah. eight goals or something yeah, like that? Yeah. So it's, it's low, isn't it, Yeah. for the Premier League? So we need goals. So And it's a hard market that we're going to be in because we can't get a world-class player. Yeah. We don't want like a, you know a mediocre championship player. So it's easier said than done, but we do need either like, you know, 
ah, it's difficult. We need goals, so we need a striker in there. Um, for me, the wings need looking at as well. I'd say 90% of town fans would agree that Van La Par is outstayed his welcome now. Yeah. I mean, other than his amazing goal at West Brom, uh, you know, great goal that was. But for me, you know, you got Shakiri. Shakiri at Stoke, you know, he could be a nice replacement. I mean, a lot of people are looking at him, but, yeah. you know, you've got people like Redmond at Southampton that never gets a game because Mark Hughes doesn't seem to rate him. You know, there's, there's people there, do you know what I mean? So I think the wings need looking at. Van La Para, yeah, we need goals. However, De Poitier and Munir were brilliant, but not enough goals. So for me, one or even both could go for me. I mean, um, it, I am... Difficult. Yeah, I mean, I'm a, I'm a massive Mounier fan, I yeah, must admit. Yeah. And like, I think the problem for Mounier is has been the quality of delivery into him. Yeah, I yeah. think we're very good yeah. winning the ball back. We're very good at moving from defence into midfield. But then when we get up to that final third, we're very poor Can't at transitioning yeah, into yeah. the penalty area and making decent chances. Fair and point. for me... Van La Parra, you know, but just being a professional winger on our ever many thousands and not being able to cross a ball on yeah. the run is it's not good enough. It's, it's, it's not, not it's good not good enough, enough really. No, and it was unfortunate Kachunga got injured as well because you know he's got a bit more about him. But yeah, you know, I think we need to train for. I think there needs to be a clean sweep really without affecting the team spirit too much because that togetherness is so important. And if you just take 10 out and bring 10 it won't be the same so I'd say at least five maybe six need to go yeah and then the rest can stay I'd keep hints uh, I think that he's got more more to give yet although he's been a little bit lacklustre I think he's got more to give he's got more in his locker than what he's shown us yet um, you know Hogg for me will stay although Sean Dyche at Burnley loves him and he might take him now that wow. Scott Arfield's gone up to Rangers with Steven Gerrard so you know what I mean who knows? You never know with football. Um, but I'd, I'd say that there's, there is quite a few. Your Malones, Billings, um, maybe Kachunga, uh, Kwana that, that need to go. Uh, yeah. Because they're not really that, you know, they're not good enough for this level, really. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think I'd possibly give Billing a little bit more time. He's, yeah, he's still yeah. young, isn't he? But certainly yeah. Kwana looks... Yeah. Out of his depth in a lot of situations. Yeah, Malone is yeah. not a defender. No. Yeah. Um, whether whether you're moving forward as a winger and see how he does is debatable, yeah. but you know for me he's, he's not he's not a Premiership standard no, defender. Not, uh, no, I don't think so. Mm. So I think we've covered that. Who we could stand to lose, really? I mean, we've you know yeah. touched on that. We've quite touched upon who we can lose. Yeah, I mean, and obviously you got the ones that we can't. Like Dean Whitehead's retired, so he's gone. But he hasn't even played that much anyway. So, yeah. You know, so fair play to Dean. Um, you know, Congolo. Looks like he's going to go back to Monaco. So we've got yeah. the ones where we've got no choice about it. You know, fate's going to play its part. And then obviously we've got the ones that we can afford to lose, you know, yeah, we've already discussed. I think the good thing for us, though, is like, you know, anybody that's been in that team that, that came up with us, especially, but even people that we've bought, I think they've, they've added value to themselves just oh, by virtue of the season yeah. in the Premier League. You know, Massive. Yeah. You know, we can make money on Van La Parra. We yeah. can make money on on Kwana yeah. easily you know they've proven to definitely. be championship standard players so I think there is money to be made there yeah definitely mm. now moving off Huddersfield Town we've yeah. just had the England squad announced for the World Cup um, but looking at the town players at the World Cup do you feel mm. that they can have an impact you know we've got Moya Australia yeah. we've got Lossel and Zankaru admittedly They're don't play as much, but with Denmark. Denmark, yeah. Do you think yeah. that that could be a, an arena for them to make a mark on? Yeah, yeah I don't know about Lossel and Zanker, but definitely Moy. Um, you know, Australia need him, without a doubt. Um, and they look quite handy, what I've seen Australia, actually. I think, you know, they're... They look quite. You've got Cahill up top as well. It's got bags of experience. Yeah. And if Moy's supplying him, he will find the net, because he... He's always been a proven goal scorer. Well, I mean, you see that um, last World Cup, that yeah. volley that he hit was just ridiculous. Wasn't what it? a goal that was. That was a cracking goal. Um, but Moy, I think it's just another stage for him to show what he's got. Um, I've been a little bit sort of about his fitness, you know, um, but I think he can definitely influence and they're, they're going to be relying on him over there to, to sort of be the engine room. So that's why I'm thinking about fitness and to also you know, be the supplier to, to Cahill. So I think Moy, it's, it's a big, big, op big opportunity for him. Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, I think you know, it's certainly Moy. Um, 
but I do think that they will struggle with Australia and I think yes. that'll mean that we yeah. will probably have which we didn't really have last season, a good pre season with all the players yeah. there and that yeah. opportunity yeah. if Agner does stay to really drill a pre season into him, give Moy a bit of time to recuperate yeah. as well. He was burnt out last season. Yeah. The championship season he was burnt out on yeah, by I the mean, end of it. You know, you go in what were it, Honduras, Europe, Australia, Europe. I yeah, mean, it's, it's gonna it's gonna it's run not, a man down. It's not Blackpool it? Preston, is it? <laughs> not at all, is it? No, to be fair. Um, so the England squad. What's your opinion on that? I mean, well, I don't know. Deflated. I'm deflated by what I see really, and you, you don't want to be too critical of England because that's all we've ever been. You know, ever since 1966, all we've done is criticise. But for me, looking at that squad, it just echoes safety. It just it looks very safe and very samey. You know, you've got like <laughs> Eric Dyer. Um, you know, you've got the. Jordan Henderson, you know, they're very steady midfielders, aren't they? You know, you've got people like Rose and Welbeck that haven't had that much game time, you know. Um, it's For me, it's just, there isn't, where's the sense of excitement there? Do you know what I mean? Where, you know, I, I would have given Shelby a chance, you know, I would have put Jermaine Defoe in there, you know. I Just, just some, you know, Jermaine Defoe, not a starter, not every game, but he could come on and nick a goal, yeah. you know, like what we had last time when we were 1-1 at Wales, against Wales. Yeah, yeah. He's the sort of person that could come on and make the difference. They just it just lacks a bit of excitement for me. Does that does that team? And um, I think I'd say quite a lot would agree. Yeah, I mean, I I, I'd, I'd certainly agree with that. I mean, I looked at it and went, well, you know, you've got you've got Young and Delph in there, but both of them are fullbacks now, which yeah. means that technically we've got a squad of twenty three with six fullbacks in it. We've got mm. one player that's in there to link the midfield up to the centre forwards which mm -hmm. is Loftus Cheek and there's no real guarantee that Loftus Cheek is going to be a starter. For me, mm -hmm. I'm, I mean, I, I, I'm a massive Jack Wilshire fan so I'd have gone oh, Wilshire, before, about Wilshire. Wilshire before Definitely, Shelby, yeah, I forgot about Wilshire, yeah. It would have been he's, one of those two for me. And he's had a great season as well, you know, why ain't Wilshire there? Well, this is the thing, he's put Adam Lallana in as a standby. And his reason is because Jack Wilshire's, he's not sure about Jack Wilshire's fitness. And Jack Wilshire's featured in 38 games yeah. for Arsenal this season. Both and Adam Lallana has got 90 minutes under his belt all season. Yeah. I, I just, it, it's I, just was, very safe, that's, yeah. that's what it is. He's just thinking yeah. safety, he's not taking any risks. Like a Jack Wilshire could make a difference, you know. Yeah. Uh, well, he would make a difference. So, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's deflating, but, you know, my expectancy is that they will get out of the group stage. I think that's a minimum expectancy. I mean, but if that, you never know, do you? <laughs> it's one of those. I mean, if we don't get out of that group, then I'll probably start supporting Wales, I think. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's <laughs> at least you know what you're getting. Yeah, <laughs> it's a good point. It's a right. good point. So, out of the group stages, much beyond that? No. No, I can't see it myself either. Well, Sean, that's all we've got time for. Thank you for joining nice us. One. Good luck Cheers, with the mate. Zoom. Thanks. And that's all we've got time for today. Thank you to you guys for joining us and see you next time from the Cowshed. Yeah.